Hey guys, welcome to Kind of Pro Tutorials. Today I'm gonna to show you how to incorporate a photo into your video and make it look professional. Make it look like it's a time lapse with a camera movement and not just a Ken Burns slider effect. You need to download a time lapse clip, just a stock clip, and you need to have your photo that you're going to be using. In our case, it's going to be this house. Um, and then I've downloaded a time lapse clip from a stock video website. This is the clip. Um, so we're going to make this look as legitimate as we can. So open up After Effects and import your time-lapse clip and your photo that you're going to use in your video. So we have our two layers. We're going to, or our two things, we're going to throw in our, our photo that we're going to use. Forgive it not being a high-res photo. This is really just an example to show you what's going to happen here. So make it fit in your composition. Um, we need to, basically what we're gonna do is mask out this house and replace the sky. Um, that's the first thing we're gonna do. So get in close, use your pen tool, which is G, the shortcut to get to that. And the shortcut H is your hand tool. So you can move around the image here. And I'm going to just trace this house. So that's what we're replacing. We're going to replace that sky. Um, we're going to invert this mask though, because that's not, we're not replacing the house. And now you can see kind of what we're doing here. We're going to throw in our time lapse clip put it underneath the house clip. And yes, you have an, a good example here of what's going on. We're gonna make this look much better though. So feather that mask to make this blend a little better with the, the image. This is kind of, we're gonna move this mask up a little bit so we can see a little more of these trees um, and a little more of the other houses even though it's a little faded. And you're gonna, you know, your image is gonna be a little different. You're gonna have to play with it. Um, you know, do what you can. This is just an example with this particular image. So you can kind of see through the house a little bit. We don't want that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to copy our house image. Um, and we're gonna have a second house on top of it. Um, you're gonna go into your house and basically we're gonna, uh, we can rename this house to, um, so with this one, we're gonna get rid of that feather. So now we have our other um, layer below this, the first house. Okay, so you can see here now that the, we are creating a little better a background here. You can see these lines, we don't want those lines. Um, so we're gonna go back into our mask, bring that down to the fence. So it'll be a little more of a faded look, um, but that's, uh, that's okay, our subject is the house. And you know you could play with this a lot, make it look a little more detailed. This is just to give you an idea of what you can do. Okay, so now we're gonna do another copy of this house. And um, this is going to be our porch. So get rid of that mask that was on there. We are going to extrude the porch here um, to make it look a little more three-dimensional. Um, remember, we're creating a camera movement in the end here. And so we want this to look a little more like we're there, not just a photograph. So we're going to rename this porch and we're going to uh, mask out the porch itself. Um, be pretty specific with your mask here. Try and get every edge. Um, again, using the hand tool to maneuver around when you're zoomed in so far. Again, I apologize for the low res image. Okay, so we have our mask around our porch. We are now going to, uh, you can kind of get an idea here uh, of what this is, and we're gonna make this extrude, like I said. So we're going to increase the size or the scale of it, make it just a little bit bigger. Um, this just, like I said, creates a little bit of a, um, a depth 
to the house. Um, you might have a little bit of weirdness going on, so try and line it up the best you can to make it look natural. Um, so you can see here, we've extruded. It's subtle, but this uh, plays a huge part into making this look a little more like a video than a photo, especially with our camera movement. So we're gonna do the same thing here as we do at the porch, but we're gonna do it with the grass. We're gonna try and make the grass look uh, like it's under our feet, like we could just walk out there. Um, this is really important for the camera move because uh, we're gonna get close to the grass. So we wanna make it look like it's it's physically there, not just like a photo. Um, you'll kinda see what I'm doing here in a second. So we need to make all these layers 3D uh, because eventually we're gonna add this camera. And we need to basically make the anchor point of this grass layer uh at the point of which the grass is going to start to extrude towards us so we're going to move the anchor um up to where the grass is this is sorry let me turn off these other layers you can see what we're doing here okay we're going to move the anchor point to right there now we're going to bring our image back down to line up with the other house images and you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. So line that up the best you can with the old house. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna get to our X axis because uh, we are in 3D space now. And we're going to rotate this to the so we can make the grass lift a little bit. You can see what we're doing here. Um, and I will show you what it looks like with and without. We need to move this to make it look a little more natural. There we go. All right, that blends nicely right there. Cool. So you can kind of see how it looks like it's a little more beneath your feet. Um, I'll toggle this on and off. Subtle, like I said, but this is extremely important for our 3D camera move. So you could leave it like this if you want. Um, personally, I think this still kind of looks like a photo with just a replaced sky. So we, we want to make it look like a jib movement down. Um, so we're going to add our camera. All this looks good. Um, so we need to uh, have our starting point. You can cycle through the camera options by pressing C. But you can see here now what we did. We've got our basically two planes. We have the our um, grass layer, which is pulled out to the side, and all our other layers that are vertical. Um, and so, like I said, cycle through the camera options with C. You can rotate. You can um, move it up and down. We are going to get to our starting point of our camera movement, which is up high. Like I said, we're going to try and do a jib downwards. And then we're going to keyframe all of these. So turn the keyframing on. We need to move these clips out. After all, they are just still images, so it doesn't really matter. Um, just as long as the time lapse clip will really allow for us to uh, extend, however long you need your clip to be. So we're going to go to the end point here, and we are going to uh, move our, our image here to where we want the camera movement to end which it's automatically setting the keyframe for us. Be careful. Don't make your um, grass layer become visible underneath it. So that is the farthest we could possibly go. And you can see here, we're going to render this out. Um, you, you can see here now our movement is um, subtle, but it's still a nice little jib movement down uh, through a time lapse. So it looks like a motion time lapse. Um, this is... The final product, um, you know, this is going to look much better than just a still photo sitting in your video timeline, you know, depending on the project, but this will be sure to impress any clients. This final version you see here is the original one I did. It's a different time-lapse clip, but um, I added a lens flare. I added some color correction. Just play with your photo. It's going to be a lot different than mine. The key is to create different 3D layers and extrude them in your photo to make it look like it's a video, look like it's in 3D space, and that camera movement is essential as well. Um, so play with it, have fun.
And here at Kinda Pro, we are going to make things look like they're professional, even though we're doing them in amateur ways. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel to see more Kinda Pro tutorials. Thanks.